started breaking it out against them, it was Tactical and Core JJ that showed you the way that you fight MF Seraphine is that all-in style that you were talking about. That's why they hovered the Samira. Of course, she has been kneecapped with nerfs a little bit since, so they've gone with the Jin. But I'm very excited to see Core JJ and Tactical play up against this combo and see if Sword Art and Lost can beat them at their own game. Yeah, I definitely, I also want to point out that some things have changed with this Team Liquid bottom lane since the early days of spring split since those in-houses before spring even started um and you know people really want to see a resurgence for tactical because this guy one of the hottest rookies last year such a big outbreaking performance from tactical also performed extremely well for team liquid at worlds you know at the highest stage with the most pressure on him but has suffered a little bit here you know towards the mid stages of spring and towards the end of spring split uh, you know, with some of these uh, poor positioning, getting caught out later. Uh, but also, we haven't seen as many dominating bottom lanes from Team Liquid uh, from them. And we're definitely looking to continue uh, that early tradition you're talking about of Tactical Core JJ, getting these 2v2 kills early on. It just, it just has not... Uh, you know, happened very recently for them. So, TSM, uh, they do have one sweeper here on the Seraphine for Sword Art. So they go for the delayed invade, get the sweeper, they get the extra experience, but, uh, ooh, and they're continuing on it for a split map here. TSM, they want to try and uh, isolate the bottom side matchup for Lost and Sword Art so they can continue to just throw out the harassment that you're alluding to, the Misfortune combo into the Seraphine snare. Man, when you play a bottom lane that has the ability to just control the matchup with their powerful range like that, you love it when the jungler wants to play around your lane. It lets you be as aggro as you want to be. It lets you push it to the limits. And we'll see how those limits are pushed up here in the Renekton versus Gnar matchup as well. Huni and Alfari. Alfari, of course, the big outstanding performer here in the top lane over the course of this split. The guy sort of at the top of everybody's lists. And Huni being the dark horse, I just... The conversation around Huni, Kobe, is always so much fun. Because you have some people saying, what the hell, Huni is inting every other game. He just dives and dies randomly. And other people are like, Huni is the second coming of Christ here in the top lane. As Fika <laughs> gets caught out a little bit, trying to steal away the enemy Gromp. He will not end up losing it. However, he does have the smite, able to secure that one away just fine. So we'll see both of these junglers do a full clear of one half of their opponent's jungle. And they even ignite him. Flowers, what was that? Like, Cordae and Tactical They were both, really in there. <laughs> yeah, they both go up there. They land the play. They they throw down Ignite. The, the communication already for Team Liquid, a little bit jumpy there. Um, definitely some split decision making. They decide to back off. I'm assuming that was, hey, the, the wave at our tower is dying right now. Uh, we are going to lose out experience trying to harass Spica. And they didn't want to try and, you know, chase him super far. He still had Flash available. Uh, so assuming that was the call off, but it looked like, uh, you know, at least Core JJ was on the page of let's kill him, get him out of our jungle. He hits the play, hits the ignite, and let him walk away. Yeah, losing that summoner spell just means less of that all-in potential. Having healing reduction against a champion like Seraphine, who's so good at defending when you try to dive onto her. Very important stuff. So that means Core JJ and Tactical will probably be waiting on that one before they try to make any kind of a move. Even more so, considering Speak is still just playing on this bottom half of the map. He's fine with the full vertical jungling approach. He wants to make sure that he's always shadowing these guys. Look at his movement right back into the enemy jungle just to pop the Scryer's Bloom and maintain absolute control over everything neutral on this bottom bottom half of the map, including the plants, man. <laughs> yeah, he's even going to make a slight visit towards uh, mid lane here. Jensen, you can see this is correct for mid laners. You should always hover to your jungler side of the map. They split the map. No, you know, error here. No opening Jensen is giving to speak of for that, uh, you know, easy possible gank there. Flash for Udyr to try and get some summoners out of Jensen. Uh, he easily just hovers to the top side of the map. He knows he has Santorin there. Spika has to still be on the bottom side, so no action with Spika's early visit towards that side of the map. And he actually runs over this ward without popping the Scryer's Bloom. By popping your Scryer's Bloom, of course, you're going to alert your opponents to your position. And so he he just wanted to chance it, see if there's no vision. Does get right. We're, we can see that. Oh, never mind. It don't even matter that he walked over the ward. It's first blood for Spika, and Alfari will fall. Honestly, that is pretty nutty. When you have a situation, you see the jungler coming up there. Alfari knows 
He knows that Uder just walked up here into the tri bus. He's like, let me go ward it just to make sure. Is he really in there? But that's too close. <laughs> that's too close, man. You run towards the brush with the Udir in it right around the corner, honestly. I think he just oh. underestimated the speed. He was expecting Spika to just be in the brush rather than running up to the corner. Uh, outside of Fog of War on that little corner, couldn't see Spika, run straight into the bear slap, and that's first blood. There's a reason that the copy pasta isn't walk stun job done. The boy is fast. And Spika <laughs> gets there in time to grab that first blood. Look at the first purchase too. The Ionian boots of Lucidity are such a popular choice for champions like this on the first back if you can afford them. When movement speed is the entirety of what your champion does, getting it early and getting it often helps so much. Certainly does. Honestly, too, it, Lucidity boots is a great rush for almost every jungler in the meta right now. Because you don't have to build into your jungle item with the preseason changes, so many people have given uh, over to rushing for that early move speed. Your, your move speed actually helps your clear speed as a jungler, because a lot of the time is transitioning between these camps, running to them faster, and the cooldown reduction is actually so valuable. It reduces the cooldown on your early smites. You want to be able to transform your smite into your blue smite for your extra slow. You see now for Spika, uh, still has two more to go to be able to get that transformation. Santorin's actually here at level six, a little bit of an experience lead because of the extra deviation towards topside. Both junglers are hanging out up here. One important thing to note, though, Centaurin with that ulti and Spika, even if he was level 6, remember, it's just not as big of a deal for Udyr as it is for everybody else. So they must respect the power of the onslaught of shadows here from Santorin. Power of Evil is also hanging around this area, but with Spika having already claimed the Scuttlecrab for himself, there's not much left Ooh. for Santorin to pursue here until Core JJ paths his way towards the top lane, and they might just have enough manpower to make this one work. Now, Santorin will clear out this control ward without Core JJ showing himself here just yet. Just in case Spika wants to come over that wall and fight him here, he'll accidentally jump into a bad fight. And now you can see the vision. They recognize Core JJ is there. Ping's coming out from TSM into the tri brush, saying this could be a bit of an iffy fight. But now you've got Sword Art having rotated up here as well. The numbers should be even once again. <laughs> 80 carries left on their own to farm. Sword Art walking up the river. Speak is still waiting. Hooney's down to about half HP. Alfari's walking away, and TSM's coming in to make the moves. A TP shows up, and Santorin tries for the play onto the top laner, but it will not work. Flash out. We'll see if Power of Evil is able to make something happen here. Core JJ with a flash away, and Power of Evil expends both summoner spells, but they will not get anything. What is this? A game of snakes and ladders? We got Blast Cone popping everybody over the different walls. PoE does get hooked, but Jensen very low on mana, so he doesn't even use the Shockwave. Just uses the uh, W combination there for a little bit of damage. Flowers, we've got multiple people trying to set up uh, with some sneaky Blast Cone plays in oh, the yeah. end. No blood is drawn, but so many flashes burn. PoE now is a vulnerable Azir in the mid lane, so maybe some renewed focus from Team Liquid there. I will say, though, already with that first blood uh, that Speak was able to get so easily on Alfari and being able to return to the top side for your early Rift Herald, this is completely counter to so many games that we saw in the regular split, where TSM got behind in the early game. This is guaranteed advantage for TSM early game. First blood money, Rift Herald is, a, and is an advantage, advantage trade, just considering a dragon, even if you had to give up first Drake, it's not worth nearly as much as the priority of your jungler picking up solo uh, Rift Herald there, you can get extra turret plate money, you can snowball off of extra tower damage as well. So TSM already starting this series out, um, you know, countering a lot of the expectations that people had. Well, we're not seeing a super early first Drake here, but right as the clock hits nine minutes, it's Team Liquid rotating their bottom lane over to Santorin to help him take this one. We don't see anyone from TSM in the area. They're not too concerned about it. So that should be a free Drake for the side of TL here. One last Q and auto attack means Santorin picks it up. So TL's on the board with that. And we will be keeping an eye on Spika, who still has a little bit over three of the four minutes remaining on that Rift Herald. Where and when he summons it, of course, if they just get the two plates or if they end up getting even more than that out of proper usage of it. But Spika's down here in the bottom lane once more. We'll see if they try to set up any sort of a play here in the bottom lane for TSM because Lost and Sword Art are now both level six. Having that ultimate combo between those two champions is a huge amount of kill threat. 
Yeah, that combination can CC you, lock you up for a full kill. I will say, again, with even the dragon being traded over, nine out of 10 junglers will all take the Rift Herald as long as you don't have to spend extra resources in favor of the first dragon uh, because that instant power can do so much right. in snowballing. And with TSM here, with the you know Renekton, Renekton into Nar on top side matchup for Huni, he's actually done quite well for himself with the early stages considering the map was jungle split against him and Santorin had full priority on top side for you know, for the early stages. You see how far he's still trying to get some more harassment. He did go for the call, so he's got a little bit of extra gold cash in coming later in addition to his small CS lead. But since then, TSM have been defending this position on top side very, very frequently with uh, with Spica as well as constant roams from Sword Art. And Spica does get the stun on his Santorin. Yeah, Centaurin's sticking around trying to fight this. Meanwhile, top lane turned into a 1v1 of its own. So we've got two separate 1v1s happening here. Santorin did not win out in his. Spika then maintains control over the top side. Ribbon to go after Jensen. Power of Evil following up on this one. Sending the a soldiers flash. a little bit further. Jensen with the flash over the wall. Santorin looking to try to get in there and save his buddy. Walks away with almost no oh. HP left. Jensen with a shockwave. <laughs> Spika with the Chad flash. Takes him down, but it's a one for one. Power of Evil guarantees a TSM advantage here in this fight. And now BOE, not only does he get the extra kill, but he also gets the red buff for himself. Heals right back up. He can shove this wave in. That will allow him a very nice reset. He does not have teleport. Uh, Jensen does, so Jensen was in a position to be able to make, you know, counterplay on top side or even just teleport for extra wave priority for extra tempo. But with this chase down in mid lane, now Power of Evil actually has to escape. Power of Evil trying to dash away. Good interrupt there with the flay coming out from core. Trying to see if they can lock him down long enough to get the damage oh. here. But a good sidestep away from death sentence means Power of Evil lives to see another day. And we have a first big outplay in the Power of Evil versus Jensen iteration of TL versus TSM. So many people talking about, you know, the old rivalry of, of Jensen and Bjergsen and so much history there. And now with Bjergsen heading to coach and, and choosing a champion to fight for him in Power of Evil, <laughs> definitely seems like it's turning out pretty well thus far for TSM uh, with the extra kills plus assists going over to PoE. Spika does so much here though. He just ran off Santorin and got the early health lead towards mid. Then he chases down Jensen to force the flash and get him here. Shockwave does a significant amount of damage and so he's low, but he just barely gets off his Phoenix auto, and Sintorin has to commit his R in to counter kill. So POE now with Rift Herald at his back as well is going to chunk this down to one more turret plate uh, for TSM. They get the quick gold cash in. It's approaching 13 minutes, so uh, you know another minute left there for them to try and finagle maybe a, a better Rift Herald. But honestly, the early damage on mid goes a very long way. Plus, they guarantee that they're going to get the gold cash in. Yeah, you guarantee the gold, you guarantee damage on mid, and it's one of the advantages of this objective compared to a dragon that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, the dragon's going to give that small bonus to armor and MR to everyone on the team, but Rift Herald allows Spica to guarantee that he's helping Power of Evil specifically to make sure that this mid lane carry that has done so much work for this team over the course of the split can get to the mid game at a point of power and really be able to influence these team fights, which is exactly what TSM wants to do. And it's a big domino effect. With PoE outplaying the teleport from Jensen in mid lane, dodging even while slowed away from Court JJ's hook uh, and surviving there, not only did he just not give away any gold or you know mid priority to Team Liquid during this time frame, he now has teleport advantage himself because of the attempted play from Team Liquid. And this is one thing that I've been calling out for Power of Evil for the entirety of Spring Split. He has been his normal, standard, very good laning, control mage scaling player from mid lane. But something he's done for TSM that has gone a long way in, in securing them, a lot of their comebacks towards mid and late game, is teleport for his allies. So many times he'll teleport to cover Huni in 2v1 scenarios while he's split pushing, or teleport towards the bottom lane to turn around these team fights. Uh, and that's where TSM have, have gained a lot of their comebacks towards the mid game, is with a lot of this defensive covering that he does, playing for his teammates, rather than using a lot of the teleports back to lane, you know, back to, you know, for tempo for himself. And TSM, with that priority, are able to take up Dragon number two, and yes. put a stop to any sort of early dragon stacking Team Liquid might have their you know, thoughts at.
And that means that the Infernal Rift has awoken. So an Infernal Soul on the table if this one goes the distance. Very powerful stuff in anybody's hands. And as we've been singing the praises of TSM for their good early game here thus far, Spika's playmaking, Power of Evil's outplaying of Jensen's TP, it is worth noting that the gold lead is not substantial here so far. Not even 1,000 just yet, as Team Liquid has been farming better in the jungle, in the top lane, in the mid lane. They've got higher CS counts, and it's keeping the game nice and close for them. You can see total gold there on the left. Power of Evil has the most, but Jensen's right behind him by not even 150. So very, very closely contested match here. 15 minutes in, the red buff has spawned for Team Liquid, and Spika is not one to allow that to go uncontested. It is written in the DNA of Udyr players. You must contest the enemy red buff, and Spika goes in for it, forcing Santorin away. Yeah, Santorin also early smites there. You saw almost 100 HP still left on that red buff. No extra burst damage on it. So in the end, is stolen away, plus chased out of his own jungle. And while the gold lead is not substantial right now for TSM, look at this map control. They have both rivers under control right now. Bottom yeah. side getting Scuttle Crab. They push up bottom lane. Uh, Spika actually starting up this rift tail, causing Alfari to come over. But this is an exhausted Gnar. Right after you transition back to mini form, you are locked out of generating rage uh, for a decent period of time. So he can't really build that threat of a Mega Nar, you know, counter there. So even though Speaker's like, oh, you know what, we got two people up here, I'm not really afraid. You still have a big timer there while, Al while Alfari is going to be a, just a cute, cuddly. Uh, version, no, no extra <laughs> scary threat Just behind a little that. teddy bear. They need a grizzly and they ain't gonna get one. And that means that the second Rift Herald of the game goes over to TSM. Spika will have that one ready to go wherever he chooses to use it. Could be summoned up mid lane if they want to destroy that tier one. Yes, it's almost dead anyway, but sometimes you just need that extra firepower. Jensen's going after Sword Art, goes for the Shockwave and forces the Flash out of the TSM support. Yeah, that's definitely a very valuable uh, trade there for Team Liquid because the only way that would be a poor trade is if you immediately had a fight coming up and the small cooldown on Shockwave would actually get punished. Um, you know, Sword Art without the Flash will be very vulnerable here for TSM. They're going to need him to work with Spika. As soon as you're a support, a ranged support enchanter like that and you get your Flash blown, you cannot go contest Vision. Uh, in, in any of these risky situations by yourself. No. You have to link up with your jungler. You have to hold hands. And you see already they're doing immediately that. Spika leading the way for him uh, to get some of the deeper vision and more dangerous job done. All right, TSM jungler and support doing some slice of life, hand holding, walking through the jungle, having a great time here. <laughs> but but Team Liquid nice. will do whatever they can to sweep those wards away and make sure that this is not a happy time for TSM. And Huni is not having a great time up against Alfari up here with the stride breaker completed. That Gnar is very difficult to deal with when he's just kiting you around there in that mini form. Meanwhile, back in the bottom lane, the turret has been taken a whooping. Kobe, and that thing has nearly fallen on the side of TL. Remember the turret first blown, ugh, first turret bonus. I almost call it a turret first blood bonus, but <laughs> turrets don't bleed. That's still on the board. Anybody can take it. And now a beautiful outplay there from Power of Evil, throwing Santorin back into the turret, but it will not be enough. Team Liquid just brought more bodies, and they get the kill here in the mid lane. Yep, Santorin just charges right back over, and he knocks PoE into Core JJ's hook. Look at the synergy there on the mid play, and it's actually Team Liquid now retaking control off of a pivotal kill here, picking off the Azir. You lose your wave clear. Now it's just two melee champions trying to clear it out. And then Core JJ doing what Thresh does as Huni slices forward. He immediately takes care of him with the death sentence into the play, flashes away just to guarantee he doesn't give away a free kill. And then Team Liquid will continue the push here in the mid lane, but it is TSM who take the first turret of the game there in bottom lane. I love how hotly contested this first game of the series is Captain Flowers. Yes. Gets them. Huni actually goes in for the trade, and we'll take another look at uh, the play here from Santorin. He was able to ultimate in, then immediately had gotten off his devastating charge and knocks him back into Core JJ's hook uh, with the fear proc going off. Team Liquid, they have still been counterpunching TSM 
gaining some extra Demolish procs here for Alfari on the top side, that's probably going to be enough for him to stick around and finish up this turret. So Team Liquid should be able to answer one for one in early turret gold, and that will push them 100 gold, a whopping 100 gold here right back <laughs> over into the lead until TSM retake it with the mid tower. And meanwhile, Spika does force the blue buff onto Santorin with a smite fight, though he does not steal it away. All righty, goodbye, Mr. Dragon. That one goes over to TSM here yet again. So over the five neutral objectives that have spawned so far in this game, three Drakes and two Rift Heralds, four of those have gone over to TSM thanks to their control over the neutral territory, thanks to their control over both parts of this river, as you mentioned earlier. So good signs for TSM here early on. Sword Art is nearby helping out Speak as they try to catch Alfari a little bit, but he can get himself away, and TSM will not pursue this any further. Instead, regrouping around the mid lane to make sure they're able to defend this tier one turret. Shelly has been summoned up, unfortunately, right here because she was about to run out. You gotta summon her eventually, but it looks like this will be a Rift Herald that does not get hey, get a whole lot of work done. Speak is going forward. Run, stun, job done. Jensen cannot ever get away from that one. And Hooney's got the kill on the enemy mid laner. Core JJ is caught on the wrong side of the river and Speak is gonna help him get home. TSM picking up two. It was a trap, Captain Flowers. They use the Rift Herald as bait. Oh, they bait Team Liquid into trying to come kill off Shelly and they double teleport. TSM with the Master Tactician actually going for PoE. Sweeps him back and trades ultimates. Oh, did I say that was going to be a bad Rift Herald? I was just testing you guys. That was the greatest Rift Herald of all time. They bait him in for the double kill. They get the tier two turret anyway. And TSM is up to almost a 2,000 gold lead now, 21 minutes into this game. Captain Flowers, it's time for review. Everybody was looking oh at two things to be solved for both teams in this matchup. For TSM, the question was posed, can you correct your early game? And already in game number one, they have shown it to be true. Look at this Rift Herald double teleport play. That ward deep in mid lane on the wave, I believe was earlier placed by Sword Art himself. And they had the control ward deeply placed up behind the wolves as well. So two really good placements there for TSM preemptively. And then casting the Rift Herald towards their secondary turret there, giving plenty of time for Team Liquid to get baited in uh, and congregate around this mid lane where they have no tower and TSM have the deep flank wards is just such good planning. Back to our review though, problem number one okay. for TSM, it was solved, Captain Flowers. Mid game as a problem, not showing up here for TSM in game number one. Now, the question is posed to Team Liquid. Can they solve their later game issues? Tactical, getting caught out uh, was a big issue for them. That one thus far has not occurred. On the Jin, he can position very safely. He also has not participated uh, you know, in any of the mid lane skirmishes in the early stages. So he's gonna be still sitting at zero kill participation for himself. And he's gonna have to wait for these team fights to actually group up. Alfari does that flash. Alfari trying to get away, but it's Hooney's flash first, and they're committing to this one. TSM looking for the Gnar, but as soon as they see the teleport showing up, they immediately rethink that decision. They do not want to overcommit and throw away the lead that they have worked so hard to earn so far. So that's two flashes, excuse me, just the one from Hooney there. It did buy enough time for Spika to get in range without using his own. But a flash traded for a TP here as the fight settles down. Yeah, there's no way you're going to burst down a Gnar with Steel Caps uh, with the Thorn Mail there. Definitely tanky enough. Uh, and Spika on Udyr does not have a lot of burst damage, although he can follow up with the Bear Stun. So Alfari actually nerves of Steel here. He just waits it out. He can tell there's no burst damage coming my way. Does not reactively flash to the offensive flash from Huni. And so it is a summoner spell positive trade here for Team Liquid. That being said, the side lane control actually might be a point where T Team Liquid turned this one back in their favor. Alfari's also got teleport advantage over Huni, and he's got his Gnar Rage Bard in a decent position. So the step that Team Liquid need to take is to play some deeper wards themselves so that they could also have a timely arrival of Alfari from the side wave. If he pushes on Huni, there's not a lot that TSM can do to manage these waves. They have no teleports available for either Huni or Power of Evil, uh, and Team Liquid can try and take advantage of that cooldown discrepancy. 
It's up to Team Liquid to outplay in a macro sense as TSM have been outplaying them in individual engagements. And that next engagement should come up here in under 30 seconds, Kobe, because that's the amount of time we got left until the next Drake spawn. If TSM get it, they move on to Soul Point, and that means TL has to come and contest every Drake for the rest of the game or give away that very powerful Infernal Soul. So you will see both teams now rotating into that bottom side of the river. TSM have what looks to be control for now, but instead it's more of a standoff as Alfari goes forward and Huni dashes away just to make sure he doesn't get collapsed on there and burst it down. You really have to respect the TSM frontline because even though Renekton and Udyr are not great themselves at navigating these team fights, um, they do at least have flash on Spica. And what you're really worried about is the Seraphine ultimate from Sword Art being bounced yes. off of the, those two frontliners. So when Spica and Huni run at you, it's not just them. They've also got the power of Seraphine right behind them to try and get a big ultimate. And that's why you don't want to have to run to this dragon through these little jungle corridors. You see Team Liquid right now, uh, they're trying to get past these two blue buff entrances towards the river. So they don't have to line up for a really big ultimate uh, from Sword Art, from TSM, and they're actually going to start the Dragon up themselves. Okay, Dragon has been started by Team Liquid with TSM right there next door, ready to contest it. Alfari will take a bit of damage here as he builds up the Narbar, has it at about 95%. He's almost red, he's almost ready to go. The Drake's at 2k, since Orin's about to be killed off. Kept alive here by some of the healing and shielding. Speak is now a little bit too far forward. He's going to be killed. Nicely done by TL. They take out the enemy jungler and they take the Drake, tying those up here in this game. Curtain call fired off. Fourth shot's not going to find the mark, but Alfari's moved forward and Huni's been found. Shockwave onto two with Alfari being kept alive here for the shielding. Santora can't do much. Power of Evil does a lot. Huge ult into the Team Liquid lines. TSM is turning around the fight and they are killing everybody left, right, and center. Core JJ's running away, trying to find some way out of this one, but lost in hot pursuit. It doesn't matter if you got the blast comb, buddy. You're stuck between turrets and a misfortune. Just pick how you want to die. Death sentence won't do it. And TSM turns this fight around. What an exchange for power of evil. He decides to be the main initiator on this re-engage, and the Azir ultimate turns it all around. Team Liquid caught by surprise there. All four members knocked up and pushed forward with the timing window tier two. Five seconds still left on most TL members. They do have double teleports they can try and use to contest this Baron. Let's see if Alfari is going to be enough to dissuade them from it. Well, Alfari stands alone for a little while. Jensen's finally walking all the way over here, but look at Baron. Kobe, it's already down to 1,000. It's already out of the picture in TSM. Pick up the big purple worm at 27 minutes. TSM, they certainly seem to have cleaned up those communication issues. Power of Evil has been talking about how in the early stages of spring, it was so convoluted and complicated for them. But look at this. They focus on the dragon, even though TSM don't get the dragon uh, smite initially. And they actually only use the Seraphine ult on the spell shield of Jensen. So Team Liquid go everybody forward. They think they've got it in the bag even getting the two-person shockwave, but PoE melts Alfari. It's just an Azir here firing free fire from the side, and as soon as he kills down Alfari, he goes right into the center of Team Liquid. That is every TSM fan chanting for PoE right now. PoE the hero bringing back this dragon fight for them. Look at those numbers, 5, Captain 000, Flowers. 5,180. Seven. I don't know if it was that image we played earlier of both their brains melting together or whatever, <laughs> but this dude is truly the reincarnation of Bjergsen and how he carried this team so many times in playoff games, in high stakes matches. PoE showing up at an incredibly pivotal point in the game to earn TSM a fight that then gets them a Baron and puts them at the state of the game where we're looking at on our screens right now, Kobe, taking their fifth turret, grabbing the tier two there. Huni's getting caught out a little bit now. Shockwave into the curtain call. Everything being thrown at the boy, plus the kitchen sink. Surely he will fall here. It is Jensen picking up the money, but what is this? Team Liquid's going on a crocodile hunting adventure while they're losing all their structures in the top lane, killing Renekton when he's not exactly in a great huge spot and needs to be shut down, trading that away for a tier three turret, I'm not gonna call that worth. 
Well, they also trade it for an extra turret on bottom side as they commit Alfari to the counter push here. You see Alfari has no teleport. So Team Liquid, they make this call. Hey, we're not going to fight this Baron at our inhibitor turret. We are actually going to go for a trade bottom side, commit Alfari down there. He's, he's not going to recall or anything, and they go for a kill plus an even turret trade. The inhibitor is now exposed, but it's really just an opportunity until it gets capitalized on. In that small window, I do think Team Liquid make the best decision out of their situation. Um, in being able to get a kill and still being able to open up an extra tower on the bottom side of the map. We will yet to be seeing, uh, you know, if TSM actually can re-push on this exposed inhibitor and punish them for it. But for the time being, TSM still will wear purple for another 20 seconds. And it looks like PoE's got his eyes set on the secondary outer tower here, bottom side of the map, and will at least be able to put a dent in it. Yeah, honestly, when you're looking at the, the plus gold from the Red Bull Baron buff here for the side of TSM, it's not very much. Plus 525 over the course of this entire thing, that turret will add a little bit more, take it up to about 1,000. But considering Baron itself is worth 1,500 gold, throwing 300 over to everybody on the team, it wasn't the most impressive Baron in terms of just the gold they got. But the big deal here is the fact that that top lane inhibitor turret fell. That is where so many teams make their stand. That is where so many teams will struggle to crack that line and need a Baron to get past those. But TSM now has an entry point if they so choose to take it. Next Drake is alive in 10 seconds. And so we're back to the dance, Mr. Kobe. We certainly are, and Teleport is arriving. Everybody's here for the dance. Find your partners, Captain Flowers, because the Dragon is actually on the Rift. TSM have early access to the setup on this objective, too. So Team Liquid, once again, are going to be forced to face check. TSM just burn it down. And a Seraphine ulti onto two forces out a defensive Hecarim ulti. And that is a huge tool not available for Team Liquid. But now that Speak is too far forward, he has to flash away defensively as well. Core JJ with a massive pickup on the power of evil, but an even bigger turnaround coming out from him. They get a shutdown on the TSM mid laner, and Hooney's doing a great job zoning everybody else away. The curtain call will open up, TSM will look to disengage. Santorin doesn't have a lot of HP and he has to pick his moment perfectly. He does not, and he'll be beaten down instead. Team Liquid are not playing these fights well until Tactical just pops off with the big caliber in the handgun to finish off Spica. Now he's got to figure out a way to run all the way out of this one, dropping down a couple of traps, but it won't matter. Hooney picks up the kill. It's four dead on the side of TL, and TSM gets the Drake to boot. And guess what? They have that exposed inhibitor flower, so maybe we get to see the ramifications of it after all. Looks like TSM are just splitting to take up the rewards in the jungle, though. Can't quickly enough run up there and try and take it down. They will mine the rest of these jungle camps. All of them counter jungled here in the aftermath. But my goodness, you mentioned it once again. Team Liquid on the re-engage. They've got some problems coordinating here as Alfari was yes, turned into, into mini form and up in position behind the back of the Dragon Pit. So TSM, they just make the call to turn. Yeah, you've got us flanked here by a mini NAR, but the mini NAR is not going to even be able to join if they just turn right on the front line. And really good decision there by both Huni and Spika as they get the surprise engage, turning it around onto Team Liquid. And again, pulling back a victory in a team fight down here around Dragon, where Team Liquid actually make a very good opening play. They learned their lesson from last time. They cannot ignore Power of Evil. So poor JJ flashes in, gets the hook on him, and they trade support life for the mid laner's life. And that is a, a huge power up trade for Team Liquid. But you look at this positioning as well as Mininar transferring here. Alfari can't get over, and they just turn right back around onto the front line. Spika and Huni immediately stunning them up. Uh, you know, for the extra damage there for Loss to be able to finish it off. And now TSM, priority once again, pushing out mid. They've even got control wards over Baron, so they can easily rotate over. And Team Liquid will take control over the top side river right now. But this gold lead has climbed up to five and a half thousand. They are fighting from a true deficit. And TSM, even without the gold lead, just has been making better moves. So it's up to TL to pull off something crazy here if they want to get back into this game. Azir turret summoned up on the ruins of the Team Liquid Tier 1. TL running back away off to the left. It's Hooney going in for the stun, but he doesn't get it. Instead, it is survival for Jensen thanks to the spell shield. 
and Hooney's Flash doesn't get much of anything here for TSM. Yeah, I don't, not sure what he wanted to pop it with. Uh, you actually can't, like, Stride Baker prop, uh, pop those Spell Shields. So he goes in and immediately just uh, stuns the Spell Shield. Uh, flash used as well. So that is a bad. big team fighting tool for Renekton, by the way. A really, really big difference between these late game Renektons with Flash and those without. Now Tactical, now Jensen. They don't have to be so afraid because uh, you easily can peel with the Jin, with the uh, Thresh there, uh, be able to create a lot more space for the team. Even though no objective traded in that little skirmish towards mid, Team Liquid definitely counting their lucky stars as that is a, a decent cooldown down. I will say though, with this extra vision control that TSM have kept over Baron, they can just return to this site and try and bait in Team Liquid again. There's only one minute left on this dragon. So if TSM are able to push out both bottom and mid lane for themselves, an easy transition over towards the next Infernal Dragon, threatening that Infernal Soul, can be the third way that they actually bait Team Liquid into running through some of these corridors, lining up for a Seraphine ultimate, and into a difficult dragon fight for them to take. Plus, they just had a big power spike. TSM have completed the death cap on power of evil. This inventory is so ready for a fight, Flowers. He's got the stopwatch in his extra slot, and four item power spike Azir, level 18 power of evil on Azir. This champion is so important to how these team fights play out. And in the last fight, we also saw how much damage Lost can do. Because remember, as Core JJ caught Power of Evil, it was Power of Evil's ulti tossing him back, and then the rest of his health bar evaporated under Lost's ult. Wasn't really anything else, just the ult. The power of this misfortune on five and a half items too just cannot be underestimated. TSM is now using the lead that they have with the 3-2 Drake advantage to go over to Baron and start that up. They say, if you want the Drake, you can have it, but we're taking this. And Baron's already down to half HP. TSM staying grouped up around the pit, disengaging away from the objective. It's Huni who's jumped on first here with the damage. Power of Evil looking to disengage away from Alfari. Both top laners have lost some HP with a big bullet time coming out. Centaurum being stuck a little bit with a Wombo combo showing up from TL. One for one so far, Lost dominating now his sixth kill of the game, taking out Santorin. But considering Power of Evil was the trade, that is not what TSM was looking for. Team Liquid walking away from the Baron now, heading back down towards mid. They've got to be careful. They don't want to fully disengage from this because there's so much damage potential on TSM. They could just go right back into the Baron. <laughs> yes, they will. They're not afraid. They are forcing Team Liquid to answer this. They can see, look, Tactical's got to walk all the way back up through mid. He was going down there to take the Drake as the one-man crew that you do like normal. But no, sir, it's not happening now. They're looking for a little bit more. Core JJ not going to grab the hook here. TSM coming in for the engage. That would have been a great time to have a Renekton flash. And Alfari goes forward. The shutdown of the Tactical. Could this be the throw from TSM as TL go for the Baron? Oh my goodness, Flowers, they do jump back on Baron, but you have to ask, PoE is down. The strongest member here on TSM, Lake and Azir, with full items and in inventory with the extra stopwatch for the team fight. There's no Azir here, so Team Liquid are happy to turn right back around. They actually take down this Baron while TSM are trying to go for the Dragon. Smite is here for TL, though. Santorin can just steal it. They're going in and they got it! Stolen away by Team Liquid Baron plus a Drake. They are getting everything done. Coming right back into the game right now. Power of Evil nearly caught out. Onslaught of Shadows over the wall, but it won't find the target here in time. Hooney is mad and the boys got his ulti to prove it. Core JJ coming around from the side. Hooney stepping out of the way, but Hooney's stuck. And he's farmed up just like the Krugs whose house he was chilling in. It's Team Liquid picking up another one. And TSM are 4v5 for the next 50 seconds. It's time for playoffs to get wild, Captain Flowers. TSM back-to-back -back fight throws at the Baron, but now the recall goes off and Team Liquid have to run. Speaker going in for the flash onto Alfari. Doesn't have enough damage to go all the way in and must retreat before he's killed. Another flash not doing what it needs to. Here for TSM, and honestly, these last five minutes have been such a change in the momentum of the first 30. What a reversal of fates for Team Liquid. They win two consecutive team fights on this Baron and then still are able to get their jungler down to the Dragon. Even though TSM pull off the Dragon, Huni and POE stop DPSing it. 
Santorin and Jensen combined with the Shockwave, they just burst it down and are even able to chase PoE out, force his flash here on the retreat. Meanwhile, they still have Baron. They put off the Dragon Soul, getting to Dragon Soul Point themselves, and got the extra shutdown money from the Renekton kill right onto Tactical, the correct place for them. Uh, this is now a full item build Jin. Tactical late game and Team Liquid are actually turning this one completely on its head. It is TSM with early game lead, but late game throw, late game out macro by Team Liquid. This is a banger of a game to start off a best of five, my friend. TSM, their lead one time at almost 6,000 gold, 59.48. There it is on your screen right now. Their highest lead at any point this game, just shy of 6K, and it's down to 1,000 now. A 5,000 gold swing over the course of the past couple of minutes. Still, that Red Bull Baron is around for another 40 seconds. TL are already at plus 3,300 on that play. They'll grab a little bit more up here. Nobody from TSM is coming to defend this turn. 12-10. That wasn't a typo. That's just <laughs> a crit from the fourth shot of Tactical here on the Jin. Six items. Infinity Edge, Gale Force, Collector, that fourth thing, and Rapid Fire Cannon. <laughs> All of those items have crit on them. That's 100% crit here on the Jin. Lord Dominic's regards are coming towards DSM as well now. Tactical just opening up to allow this super... Uh, <laughs> ooh, that really hit that, the That thing has energy. execute damage, by the way. It did half his health at full HP. <laughs> if he was at two-thirds health, that just kills him. Alfari's going in now looking to put in a little bit of extra damage. He's being careful enough to not get punished here by Hooney. Hooney is only at two-thirds HP, though. TL moving into the enemy base, taking down the inhibitor, and the first inhib of the game. Despite TSM opening up the Team Liquid base a while back, it's TL 41 minutes into this game taking the first inhib. All right, well, we're going to have a reset there from Team Liquid, uh, which sitting pretty here with their control over the map, taking out some of these jungle camps on the way out. And so we have time to go back to what got us here, Flowers. These barren decisions from TSM. They've got the soul point up and the dragon is actually alive over on the other half of the map but if you go and start up baron in those situations team liquid doesn't have to send anybody over to this dragon you're kind of banking on the fact that they will actually want to trade stopping your soul for allowing you some extra time on baron team liquid don't take that trade though so there's no reason for them they actually just go contest this baron and baron will do more damage and is a more of a threat to you uh you know than the single dragon the shockwave actually used oh! Oh, he, he wasn't running, he wasn't walking, that boy wasn't going nowhere. Spika is just removed from the field of play, and he will respawn about eight seconds before the Drake is live. With both teams at three to three, this is soul no matter what. And Team Liquid, they actually decide to pull the, the trigger there on the Shockwave. Jensen lets it rip and they kill the front line. Everybody kind of standing around there. How much damage is it going to take off this Core JJ hook and this pick? And turns out, Lord Dominic does send his regards. Tactical was able to put in <laughs> enough damage. And the, the Shockwave is able to CC him long enough. They actually just melt the front line. No problem there for Team Liquid. Okay, TL still trying to stay together here as TSM goes in, looking for some damage. Hooney's out here pressuring into the back line. A nice Seraphine ulti onto three, but it will not provide them the kill. They're going for the shots here. A couple more going through. Hooney's still alive. Holy Ooh. cow! 1,269 damage! Seraphine's tour is canceled! And Team Liquid are marching into the enemy base, but Power of Evil is going in. There is no miracle happening today! TSM will not hold the line against this. A deadly flourish here at the very end. Core JJ's gone fishing, and Team Liquid caught the Bud Light Ace. An incredible turnaround based off of the first half of this game. Team Liquid bring it back, and they'll take game one of the series. What an opener to playoffs, Captain Flowers. We are starting out with such a contentious matchup here. Team Liquid correcting all of this early game in 